okay for these lines now? Yes. Okay. Hold it. Stand by to go. Ready? Action. Hello there. I suppose that you're thinking my part of the Living Word presentation has had rather an unusual beginning. Actually, this is what always happens when I come before the cameras. But what I most wanted you to notice is how this, and indeed all radio and television programs, are dependent on the clock. They must begin right on the second and finish the same way. Yes, the theme of this episode of The Living Word is time. But before we move into a world of chronographs and zenith telescopes, let's allow time for some music. Music by the Salvation Army Band. Sound out the proclamation. <laughs> In order to be here on the set, I had to fly. And of course, it was quite obvious to me that the airlines are also controlled by time. This timetable told me that the plane would leave at 9.30. And I knew I had to be at the airport before then, or I'd have been left behind. Clocks play a pretty important part in my life. And yours too, I guess. Although I did hear a rather amusing story about one of our Salvation Army bandsmen, he was showing a friend the new apartment into which he had moved. After they'd been through the apartment, the friend said, uh, It's very nice, but I don't see a clock anywhere. How do you know what time it is? Without a word, the bandsman picked up his trombone and began to play a lively march. A few seconds later, there was a bang on the wall, and a voice shouted, Hey, cut out the noise! Don't you know it's 25 minutes past 11? Well, most of us do have clocks, of course because our lives are regulated by time. But for many of us, time has a special significance. Perhaps I can tell you better in song. Simply trusting every day, trusting through a stormy way, even when my faith That is all Trusting as the moments fly Trusting as the days go by Trusting Him whatever He falls the 
moments fly, trusting as the days go by, trusting him what As I said, time is a part of us, and we are a part of time. The breadwinner of the family must be at the factory or the office at a prescribed time. The housewife has to buy the groceries during the hours when the store is open. And if we want to listen to the news, we have to turn on the radio at the right time. Can you imagine the confusion that would result if all the clocks in your city told a different time? I got to thinking about this the other day while reading The Living Word which has a great deal to say about time. Listen. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. That's how the Bible speaks about time. Time hasn't always been standard. Less than a hundred years ago, most communities set their clocks to their own local time. This worked fine until the railroads started to link the towns together. What a time the engineer had trying to keep on schedule when the clocks were different in every town he passed through. Although time really changes about five seconds to every mile you travel, it was decided to divide the world into zones with an hour's difference between them. In the United States and Canada, there are several time zones. This means that a man flying from San Francisco to New York seems to lose several hours on his trip. We know, of course, that he hasn't actually lost the time, but sometimes men and women do lose time. One precious moment devoted to anything less than the best is a moment that can never be recovered. That's why it is so important that we use the time allotted to us in this life in the right way. One of the most important tasks of the observatory is to see that we don't lose those irretrievable minutes because of the inaccuracy of our clocks. Even the most precise modern timekeepers are referred to the rotation of the Earth by astronomy. The Earth turning upon its axis provides the most convenient fundamental unit of time, and the distant stars are the best markers with which to measure this unit. A simple telescope is trained on the stars as they cross the meridian, and their passage is recorded. A primary timekeeper, which is a crystal clock utilizing the regular vibrations of a quartz crystal, transmits a signal to an instrument called a chronograph. To determine the amount of error of the primary timekeeper, the astronomer sights a star at a midpoint between a pair of movable lines in the field of view. As he moves the lines to follow the movement of the star, electrical impulses are emitted. These are recorded on the chronograph, along with the clock beats, and the astronomer can then calculate the error of the clock and reset it. A night's work at the observatory can determine the time with the precision of a few thousandths of a second. Even greater accuracy has been obtained by the use of a special telescope called the Photographic Zenith Telescope, designed to photograph the passage of the star. This eliminates much of the possibility of human error. When the plate is developed, it is projected with special equipment, and measurements are made by the astronomer. How complicated it all seems. But isn't it obvious how precious time is? These brilliant scientists spend their whole lives charting, plotting, and calculating so that not one moment will be lost. 
A moment may not seem important, but moments make hours, hours make days, and days make up our life. The living word, the Bible says, that we are to redeem the time. What is done in time determines how we will spend eternity. A very wise poet once penned these words, only one life will soon be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. We read in the living word a moment ago that there is a time to be born and a time to die. There is also a time to accept Christ as your savior and settle the questions of sin, of salvation, of eternity, of heaven. The Bible says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Perhaps this is the moment for you, my friend, the moment of time in which an eternal decision should be made, a decision for good and God. Why not make that decision now? Shall we pray together? O oh God, our Father, Many of us can say our times are in thy hand. Having sought thee in time, we shall be with thee through eternity. For those who have not accepted thy son, Jesus Christ, as Savior, we pray that this moment of time may be a decisive and victorious one. We believe that repentance and faith are the twin keys that open the door to everlasting life. May by thy grace that door be opened by many, we pray. Amen. Join us again when we will seek to learn more of the living word and of him who is, in very truth, the living word. Amen.